What's up YouTube? I made this video to explain how to level an earthen bulwark druid from level 50 all the way to level 100. I'll be discussing how to progress through paragon boards and how stat and skill priority changes based on gear and level. I'll be covering concepts that are specific to leveling, but I recommend you watch my previous injured bulwark build guide for a more in-depth analysis of the build and how it works in general. I'll be linking this video down below the like button so you can check it out after you watch this video. The one requirement for this build is that you found a high rolled symbiotic aspect to put on your amulet. This is very important and I recommend you try and find a 7 to 8 second aspect for your amulet before switching to this build. I've listed the legendary aspects that you should be keeping an eye out for in order of importance. The symbiotic and rapid aspects are both very important and you want to get a max roll on these if possible. The numerical value on your aspect of mending stone doesn't really matter, you just want the bulwark to last for an extra 6 seconds. Disobedience and might become increasingly important as you try and push difficult content. If you find a max roll on one of these, I would save them for a really nice piece of endgame gear. Ghostwalker just feels great for quality of life. Since we're almost always unstoppable, Ghostwalker is just permanent move speed and phasing. Phasing means you can run through the monsters without your character being blocked by them, and this is great for both mobility and survivability. Natural Balance and Crash Stone just give extra damage, and while they're nice to have, they're not required for the build to function. There are many other options for these slots, such as Edge Masters or Conceited, so feel free to mix and match based on what you find. Next, I'm going to discuss Stat Priority. This build does fairly low damage single target against low level monsters, so if you really want to blast it's best to fight big groups of high level monsters. If you're geared properly, your damage against monsters 10 levels higher than you should be fine, however your damage will be great if you can fight monsters 20 to 30 levels higher than you. This logic is counterintuitive to how most classes level. Typically it's optimal to do nightmare dungeons with enemies exactly 10 levels higher than you, to maximize the experience per hour because this is where the bonus caps at. However, if you're fighting higher level monsters, their health continues to increase while the percent bonus does not, so it's less optimal. However, with this build, our damage actually scales faster than the enemy health, so if we fight higher level monsters, we can clear dungeons faster and level more efficiently. If we consider this, then the question changes from how do I increase my damage to how do I increase my survivability? Right, because scaling our defenses, in effect, increases our offensive capabilities and our clear speed. The best multiplier that we have is not critical, vulnerable, or even barrier generation. It's the level of the enemy that we're fighting. Because of this, I'm going to discuss defensive stat priority first, as I believe it's more important. Your top defensive priority is barrier generation. The health of your barrier caps at 100% of your base life, and you need 58.7% barrier generation to reach this cap with a level 5 bulwark, so that's a good amount to shoot for. Barrier generation increases your damage and can allow you to take skill points out of earth and bulwark without penalty. I'll be linking my barrier generation video down in the description, so check that out for a more detailed explanation about the stat. Armor is the most powerful defensive stat in the game with an achievable 85% damage reduction even against level 154 monsters. It makes a huge difference when leveling, especially if you can get a lot of flat armor from your gear and your paragon. This is because it requires less armor to reach 85% damage reduction against lower level monsters. So a flat 50 armor for a paragon node is much more valuable at level 60 than it is at level 100. Because of this you'll see in my paragon walkthrough that I pick up lots of armor very early. Damage reduction while injured is extremely powerful on this build. It caps out at 81.7% damage reduction, and you only need the affix on 3 pieces of gear to achieve this. However, this playstyle is probably not worth doing if you can only get it up to 60-70% to 70 uh, damage reduction while injured. So when you're still leveling, I recommend just playing a full life version of the build until you get really solid um, like max roll damage reduction while injured pieces, and you need that increase to the effective health of your barriers. This build can clear pretty much all content in the game with the full life version, so the only reason to switch to a damage reduction while injured variant is if you're like me and just want to build the most unnecessarily powerful character possible. Attack speed and basic skill attack speed can also be considered defensive stats. By increasing the speed you attack, you're able to get more symbiotic procs and therefore cast more earthen bulwarks per minute. More earthen bulwarks means more damage and more survivability by replenishing your barrier faster. 
My next favorite damage reduction set on Druid is damage reduction while fortified. We're pretty much always fortified, and it works whether you're close or ranged, and it seems like a good option for Lilith as well. Next, I would try and find damage reduction from close, because it rolls higher than damage reduction from poison. Damage reduction from distant is fine for the occasional corpse bow, but overall it doesn't feel as useful as the others. Barrier generation is a great way to increase your damage and survivability, as well as free up skill points. Get as much of this as you can. Attack speed and basic skill attack speed are both fantastic for this build because, similar to barrier generation, this is both an offensive and a defensive stat for us. More attack speed means more earthen bulwarks, which means more damage. Vulnerable damage is also extremely valuable because we don't get much from our gear, especially with the changes to vulnerable damage in Season 1. Critical strike chance is also really important because we have a massive critical damage multiplier. If we don't crit, we don't get any value from this. Critical strike damage is nice to get, but we just have so much of it already that it isn't as impactful as increasing some of these smaller multipliers. The item power or attack power of your weapon does not affect Earth and Bulwark's damage, so I suggest focusing more on finding a crone staff or an axe totem setup with high rolls on the affixes you want, and don't worry so much about the DPS of the weapons. I made several build planners for you guys to show the route that I would take to progress through my Paragon boards. I'm going to quickly go through why I chose to path this way, but if you want to double check any of the glyphs or nodes, I'll be linking the planners down in the description. We path to the left through the armor nodes and then socket exploit in the glyph socket. I don't really care about the vulnerable proc, since we have near 100% uptime on vulnerable anyways thanks to storm strike. Then we path up and socket protector here, and this is primarily to boost the armor that we get from the determination node. And then we path through here to tenacity for even more armor. We're going to path to the left, picking up this attack speed as we go, and then socket earth and sky down here. This is mainly to increase the damage reduction from poison nodes, but it also increases these damage to poison nodes as well. Next we're going to make our way down to fang and claw and pick up the 40 willpower required to activate the glyph bonus. Finally we're going to path to the right here for even more armor. Now that we've solidified our defense, we're going to take these two legendary nodes, earth and devastation, and a heightened malice. This is where the build should really start to do big damage. After this we're going to path to the left for undaunted and activate the glyph bonus for more damage reduction. We go down and pick up all this attack speed here and then come down to this board and path to the left and activate the glyph bonus for territorial for again more damage reduction. Then we're going to come down here and pick up this deluge cluster for more critical damage. Finally I go back and pick up crushing earth and then up here to Havoc for more critical strike damage. Starting out, I would just level your glyphs to 15 in this order, which is the order in which they're socketed in the Paragon boards. I would level Exploit first because Vulnerable is a huge multiplier and we don't get a whole lot of it from our gear. Next I'd level Protector or Shapeshifter to 21 because leveling it increases the armor that we get from Determination and this is going to be more valuable the earlier we get it. I would probably level Earth and Sky next for the boost to the damage reduction while Poison nodes. Next I would probably do Fang and Claw, but you could really do these last three in any order and it wouldn't make a huge difference. Claw is our main basic skill because the enhancements make us attack faster and give us the chance to attack twice. All these extra attacks are extra chances to proc the symbiotic aspect on our amulet. If you're using the Crone Staff variant, you're also going to invest here in the Fierce Storm Strike for the 50% vulnerable chance. We take Innate Earthen Bulwark, which turns it into our primary offensive and defensive skill. If you have enough Barrier Generation, you can actually take points out of Earthen Bulwark and allocate them elsewhere. Check out my Barrier Generation video for more information on that. We take Cyclone Armor for the passive damage reduction, but it can also be used in a pinch to push away enemies and gives us a 30% chance to get a free Earthen Bulwark, thanks to the Nature's Fury key passive. Poison Creeper is fantastic because it gives us 20% bonus crit chance and helps us to CC enemies. The Poison also helps us to build disobedience stacks and activate damage reduction while poisoned. Our Pack Leader Boon resets the cooldown on this skill very quickly so we can spam the active on it a lot. We use Hurricane primarily for the damage reduction and disobedience stacks, though in the non-unique build you can actually swap to the natural Hurricane for more vulnerable uptime. You want to try and cast this skill before you run into a pack of enemies. Petrify gives us a long stun and a big crit multiplier. I use this to take out packs of elites or bosses. 
Try to use Poison Creeper at the same time so that you benefit from the additional crit chance in addition to the extra critical damage multiplier. Finally, the Nature's Fury Key passive enables this build in conjunction with the symbiotic aspect. The boons are pretty self-explanatory. From the deer, we take wariness for the extra damage reduction. From the eagle, we take swooping attacks for extra attack speed. We spirit bond with the wolf and take bolster for extra fortify and pack leader to reset the cooldown of our poison creeper. For the snake, we take calm before the storm to reset the cooldown of our petrify. I like to gem for barrier generation because it's just such a powerful stat, both offensively and defensively. If you're pushing tier 100 dungeons and you have less than 12,000 armor with full buffs including disobedience, I recommend using iron skin. Um, otherwise, I would use whatever the best attack speed elixir uh, that you can use is. Heady assault elixir is my choice, but it requires level 95, so if you're lower level, just use the best attack speed elixir you can. For wrathful hearts, the barber is your top priority. This is a massive boost to your AoE DPS and your clear speed. Revenge gives you up to 20% damage reduction, which is fantastic for this build. Finally, we use Tempting Fate because we have a really high critical strike chance and the Barber's Explosions always crit anyways.